Well, good day, everyone. Mere hours have passed since I filmed and edited the re-review of the Zygu G106, and Radioddity has emailed me with a new firmware update for the G106. So let's dive in, and I will show you how to upload it, and we'll see what it does, and we'll upload it and take a look. So yeah, let's do that. <laughs> So we can see here on my screen, I have uh, this G106 firmware version 1.1 beta. This isn't beta testing, so it's not actually on Radioity's website. And one thing you're going to need is this program here called TerraTerm. Now, that's not packaged with the download that they sent me, but you can just go to the Radioity website, click on support, click on Zygu, and that will take you to where the uh, software downloads are. If you just click on the G90 and download uh, any one of these firmwares I just downloaded 1.78 beta that will have packaged with it this update tool which is called TerraTerm and you can just install that and you can complete the process I've already done that I've already extracted it it'll, it'll be a zip file you can just right click it and hit extract all and save it wherever you want so the first thing we need is a programming cable for the Zygu radios which unfortunately does not come with the G106 I just happen to have one lying around and we're going to use the com connection there on the radio so just plug that in and we actually want to have the radio off at first then we are going to open TerraTerm. we're going to click on serial and we need to find the com port that this is on and if you don't know that you can go to your device manager and click here on ports com and you can see all these ports here. If you unplug your USB device, it'll go away and you can kind of see. So we have three, four, and six. If we plug it back in, that COM port 12 will show back up. So we know that we're on COM port 12, just like that. So now we can choose COM port 12, hit OK. Then we're gonna go to setup. We're gonna go to serial port. That's already on COM port 12. We need 115,200 as the baud rate. Now on mine, I click new settings. Sometimes there's an okay button. I, I don't know why, but just make sure you click on either new setting or okay. And now before we turn the radio on, we actually wanna hold the, hold the volume button. This volume button is actually, the volume knob is actually a button. So push it in and then go ahead and hold. And as soon as the, you'll see the bootloader uh, load up and then we're gonna hit number one because we want to erase what is on the radio. Now, once that is done, then we're going to go to File, Transfer, X Modem, Send. Very important, this 1K right here, you have to check that. Otherwise, it will not work. Then we can double click our firmware version and it's going to go ahead and upload. While that's happening, we can take a look at what we get in the release notes. So what they're saying is we're going to have a more precise CW key timing, which is actually a good thing because I noticed the CW timing was kind of horrible. Lower the transmit audio gain, a higher signal to noise ratio for transmit. We added a mic gain option. That's something that I've complained about in the past. Uh, we added a factory reset option to allow us to hold the mode button when powering on and that'll do a factory reset. And we added AM transmitted function. So they're making progress. Now we have to disconnect the power cable for some reason. This is, this is typical with, with Zygu radio. So just disconnect the power cable, let it sit for like a minute and then go ahead and plug it back in. Okay, so I actually had to wait quite a while. I gave it like two or three minutes. Uh, after a minute, it wouldn't work. So I ended up reflashing it, waited like three minutes. And now we push the power button and it actually turns on. I don't know why you need to wait Maybe the capacitors need to drain for something. I No clue, but now it works. So let's see if we can get that in focus and we'll take a look at uh, what we get here. So now let's click on the version. We can see we have version 1.1. I was on 1.0 before. And we can go to page five of five. And we have MG, I'm not sure what that is. Ah, mic gain. Good, that is excellent. So they're making progress. So let's see if these changes actually did anything. 
Okay, so we now have mic gain. The CW is supposed to be improved in, in terms of like the timing. So let's take a look. Uh, right now I have, I mean, that's good that we have a mic gain setting now. I have it at zero right now. So let's take a look and see what she does. K8 MRD testing one, two. Yeah, let me zoom that out a little bit. K8 MRD testing one, two, testing K8 MRD. So looks okay, but watch what happens when we go up. Oh, see, we already see some spikes there. Audio, because everyone likes to yell audio. Audio, audio, do your audio test. So we're at least, oh, about 10 or 12 uh, kilohertz wide there. Audio, audio. So when we, when we have those loud plosives and things, we're definitely gonna be splattering. Let me turn the mic gain up to 10 and see, hey, it goes all the way up to 30. Audio, 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 audio. Look at that. That's a dirty signal. And just for giggles, let's go all the way up to 30. Testing one, two, testing K and MRD. We don't even have to yell. It's just splattering all over the band. So uh, doesn't look like the mic gain is really helping us so much as hindering us. So that is the mic gain. Now let's take a look at the CW, put her in old CW mode there. And we'll put that in CW. I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit here. So we got two kilohertz either side of the center. And look at all those uh, extra side tones being generated. So again, we're, we're, we're back to not a clean CW signal. It feels better to key it. Um, I noticed it was kind of like missing some bleeps and bloops when I was testing it uh, before. So that part's better, but you just made it dirty. So that's no good. Now to compare, let's show you what the audio and the transmit looks like on a clean radio. I'm gonna use my ICOM 705 and we'll take a look at that just so you can have a, an idea like a benchmark. I understand we're comparing a $300 radio to a $1,300 radio. So you don't need to comment on that. I understand. But we're talking about spectral purity here. We don't want these radios getting on the air and splattering any more uh, than some of the guys on the nets that are over driving their amps. So here's, uh, let's go to sideband here. I usually keep my mic gain at 10 on the 705. So here is RF powers at five and uh, mic gain is at 10. Audio, audio, let's zoom out a little bit. Audio, audio. So see how we have this nice clean three kilohertz wide. No matter how hard I talk, audio, audio. It's not peaking anymore. Let me crank the mic gain all the way up to 100. Audio, audio. See, it never goes outside audio. It never goes outside that three kilohertz or, you know, 2,900 kilohertz bandwidth there. It's, it's very spectrally pure. That's what we're looking for. We don't want to be overdriving and having anything outside of this, K8MRD. Now, to show you what a CW signal should look like, let me plug in the keyer here. Yeah. We're using the K6 ARK copy of the Palm Pico paddle today. And we'll set this to CW. Let's go ahead and zoom all the way in and just look how much more pure that signal is. Versus uh, the Zygu. So, uh, I mean, they're trying, I guess, but not uh, not quite there. So I, I would actually, if I were going to use this radio, I would actually go downgrade back to version 1.0. Uh, it's It seemed to be more spectrally pure. So anyway, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at K8MRD. And we'll see you again on another episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.